we're going to be discussing the bones of the leg. You're going to have two very distinct bones. One is considerably larger than the other in terms of breadth. Then you have the more lateral, skinny fibula. So the tibia is your medial leg bone. It is definitely the weight-bearing bone of the leg. The entire anterior medial surface is going to be subcutaneous throughout its length. We often refer to this area as the shin. So this area is very vulnerable to bruising since it's so close to the skin. And what will happen is that you'll have some type of inflammation or bruising associated with the periosteum of the tibia. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the proximal end of the tibia. This is going to be important in terms of forming the knee joint. So I'm going to flip this over so we can see a proximal view. And you see two shallow condyles here. So these are concave areas on the proximal superior portion. These are going to articulate with the femoral condyles. The medial is generally going to be larger than the lateral. And during life, you're going to have fibrocartilaginous menisci that are going to sit right in this area. So this entire area up here is referred to, you can see this portion is as well, as the tibial plateau. So this whole superior articular surface. Now you can see right here the intercondylar eminences. These are going to be the attachment points for your cruciate ligaments. So your anterior cruciate ligament and your posterior cruciate ligament, your ACL and your PCL. Now I'm going to put this back into an anterior view. And I want us to move distally to this roughened area still on the anterior surface. This is referred to as your tibial tuberosity. This is going to be the attachment point for your patellar ligament, which is the continuation of your quadriceps femoris tendon. So dependent on um, the individual, you can have quite a bit of buildup of bone here or not as much, but you'll always have some here. Now if you move distally, there are two prominent things I want you to notice here. You have this extension or projection of bone that's going to extend distally. This is your medial malleolus or malleolus. This is going to form the bony prominence of the medial side of your ankle. This is going to articulate with the talus or the talus, which is one of your tarsal bones. And you can see here on the very end of this bone, the distal end, this whole smooth surface, the tibia will basically sit on top of your talus. Okay. Now we're going to turn our attentions to the lateral leg bone. This bone is not weight-bearing. It is important, though, in terms of muscle attachment, as well as stability of the ankle joint. So it's going to form the lateral portion of the ankle joint. This bone is also a common source for bone grafting. So even after a segment is removed, walking, running, even jumping can be normal. Now, one of the things that confuses most students in terms of the fibula is the difference between the head and the lateral malleolus, because they do look fairly similar. So in order to tell the difference, we're going to look at the head first, which is going to be on the proximal end of the fibula. This is going to be more massive, a little more square, than what you have on the lateral end, which is going to be more tapered. Also, one thing I want you to note is that the articular surface or the smooth area is going to be superiorly or proximally facing. Okay? Whereas if you're looking at the lateral malleolus or the distal end of this bone, you can see that this is going to taper off and that this smooth portion or the articular surface is going to be facing medially. So it's going to be facing towards the tibia. This is where you're actually going to have articulation with the talus or the talus. Right under, so we're moving back up into the proximal region to discuss something that I, I left out, which is the neck of the fibula. 
fractures in this area, so this is going to be just distal to the head of the fibula, fractures in this area can injure the common fibular nerve, which will have implications in terms of many of the muscles in this area. Okay, so moving back down to the lateral malleolus, this is going to be the enlarged distal end of the fibula. It is going to feel more prominent and a bit more posterior than the medial malleolus on the other side. Now you can have forcible displacement um, of this area. You can have a fracture, generally right in this area, referred to as a Potts fracture, so just superior to the lateral malleolus. And this is a common fracture in terms of the leg. 